Okay, I just strained some uh, diesel fuel through a coffee filter to get out any tiny contaminants that might be in it. And uh, now to that, I'm going to add uh, some diesel fuel treatment. The reason why is because I want a, a clean solution for pump reassembly, but I also want something that has more lubricity to it. And as we have learned, the low sulfur diesel lacks lubricity. So here's what I'm going to use uh, to mix with my diesel fuel. This is called Howes Lubricator Diesel Tree Professional Grade Performance since 1920. Diesel conditioner and anti-gel. Uh, so this is uh, good to add to your diesel fuel in the winter time if you're worrying about uh, gelling problems in extreme cold weather, that kind of thing. Um, it also it says here removes water, boosts power and performance, stops smoking, increases MPG, extends fuel filter life, cleans and lubricates injectors. So it's the cleans and the lubricates part that I'm most interested in. Uh, I wanted to use the Standardine brand uh, product for the AMS oil, but uh, my local Napa doesn't stock either one of those. And so then I decided to go with this because my local Napa orders this in specifically for one of their clients who buys these big bottles by the caseload for their entire fleet of commercial vehicles and swears by it. So I figured, hey, uh, I'll give it a shot. Okay, the normal mixture for that additive is uh, temperatures above zero degrees, Fahrenheit, uh, one ounce for 25 gallons. Uh, what I've done here is a 50-50 mixture. And uh, again, that's because I'm pretty much more interested in lubricating these parts. I'm not looking to actually burn this fuel. Uh, this is going to be forced out during the first um, cranking over of the pump and priming it. And once, uh, once I've got that out of there and the fuel starts coming in, the fuel will take over the job of, of keeping the pump lubricated until the engine starts. So I've got uh, enough in here to keep uh, the rotor assembly fully covered and I've got some other critical parts that I'm going to be um, keeping in there until assembly. I'm going to get the rollers and shoes in there also and I'm going to cover that up so no dust can settle in there and set it aside and work on mounting the sleeve, the new sleeve into the pump. Okay, here's what I've decided on uh, to use to lock the new pilot tube, uh, which is this bushing we talked about into the pump body. Uh, this is Permatex sleeve retainer, high strength sleeve retainer. This is for automotive grade. Uh, here they're showing on the uh, picture that it's uh, being used to retain a cylinder sleeve uh, that's uh, being slid into a block. It says secure studs, pins, slip and press fit assemblies uh, to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, uses valve seats, cylinder sleeves, and woodruff keys uh, prevents fretting and corrosion. I don't know what fretting is. But anyways, um, I read somewhere online that somebody else who was putting these pumps together was using this. And uh, the other alternative they, that seems to come up is epoxy. The problem is there are so many different types of epoxy out there. I mean, I have a two-part epoxy that I could put on this. And I guarantee you it would hold that in there. Problem is, I don't know whether or not uh, diesel fuel oil would have an effect on that epoxy over time. And also, I'm worried about the, the strength being uh, too much. In other words, at some point, if I ever had to take this tube out, how hard would it be to get that out? So this has a, uh, says on the back here, a 3,000 PSI shear strength. So that's pretty darn tight. The other thing I like about this is that this basically uh, is also going to uh, provide a decent seal because we don't want any fuel that's under pressure, even though the pressure is not extremely high in the housing there, we don't want any fuel under pressure to be forced past uh, this outside of the sleeve and leak into the back face. So prior to applying the sleeve retainer on the parts and assembling them, I want to clean them really well. I want to clean this bushing because this may have some oil residue left on it from the manufacturing process. And I also want to clean the inside bore here uh, as best that I can. I'm going to use, uh, this says paint thinner, but this is mineral spirits. 
So I want to use this mineral spirits because it'll uh, take off any of that oily film and um, it will um, evaporate away rather quickly. Now for assembly, I'm going to run a bead of this around each one of those little ring areas there. And then I'm going to insert it with a twisting motion. And I want to insert it far enough so that this back edge is flush with the inside, just like the original one was when I took it out. And I also want to make sure that this beveled side here, uh, which is going to be crucial to the later operation of installing the umbrella seals, uh, is facing this way. Here you can see I've applied it to all the grooves. Now as I installed this, I twisted it. And that twisting motion as you install it helps uh, evenly distribute the, uh, the sealant. And uh, of course some of it squeezes out because it is tight tolerance. So I'm going to wipe up what's dripping off right there. And I'm going to keep this sitting like this because it takes an hour for this to become fixed. And then 24 hours to fully cure. I'm actually out of time today so I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. All right, I'm back to work here on the pump. I've had plenty of time for the sleeve retainer to uh, set up, and uh, I feel confident that that's going to hold that sleeve in there, or pilot tube as they call it in there. Uh, I got a little bit of residual I got to clean up here, but other than that, it seems like it's going to be fine. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to work on reassembling the rotor so and what I want to do right now is I'm going to uh, take a little sharp pick and remove this o-ring so I don't mistakenly think that I already replaced it later before I uh, go any further I want to remove this uh, residual stuff that's in here I don't know if you can see it. I've got the camera set up you reposition my camera on the tripod so that the light is in the right uh, position. All right, here we go. Uh, so now you can see down in here there's this uh, little bit of discoloration stuff on the metal inside there. And that's also on the two uh, half shaped, uh, half circle shaped retaining pieces here. So I'm going to remove all of that. Uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, uh, steel wool, fine steel wool or emery cloth to, uh, to get that off. Okay, that's better. Um, not spotless, but I don't want to get too aggressive uh, with any kind of an abrasive. So you can still see there's a little bit of staining on those pieces there. But it's starting to look pretty good. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to reinsert the uh, rotor assembly into the head assembly here. So I'm going to get my rotor out of the uh, out of the fluid bath that I've had it sitting in, and kind of get this out. And I'm going to throw on some gloves. So I can handle these parts. All right, so now, as you recall, the uh, rotor assembly is going to just be inserted in through this way. So, and now I'm going to invert it like this, and I'm going to install the two halves of the retainer. I recall correctly how that goes in. Uh, I think I've got to, yeah, I've got to have this up a little bit. Put the two halves in position, off to the side lower it down and then I need a little something to just coax that over. I'll get a screwdriver. All right. Carefully 
jockey that into position. A little bit of fussing, I'm sure I'll get it. There we go. There's one. Not quite. There we go. Alright, now that I've got those in there lined up correctly, I can now reinstall this retaining clip, which is what keeps that from going anywhere. This ought to be interesting. Bit of a trick to do this, I'm sure. Of course, because those want to move. Okay, let me get another screwdriver to grab the other side of that so I can spread it apart enough to get it to slide down, hopefully. Alright, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. 